Do you think you will be a mathematician that develops a theory of everything? What often happens is that when the physicists need uh, um, some theory of math mathematics, there's often some precursor that the mathematicians um, worked out earlier. So when Einstein started realizing that space was curved, he went to some mathematician and asked, you know, is, there, is there some theory of curved space that the mathematicians already came up with that could be useful? And he said, oh yeah, there's a, I think a, Riemann came up with something. Um, and so yeah, Riemann had developed you know, Riemannian geometry, um, which is precisely um, you know, a, a, a theory of spaces that are curved in, in various general ways, which turned out to be almost exactly what was needed um, for Einstein's theory. This is going back to the weakness, unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics. I think the theories that work well to explain the universe tend to also involve the same mathematical objects that work well to solve mathematical problems. Mm. Ultimately, they're just sort of both ways of organizing data um, in, 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 in useful ways. It just feels like you might need to go some weird land that's very hard to to intuit. Like, yeah, you, know, yeah, you yeah. have like string theory. Yeah, that, that's, that, was, that was a leading candidate for many decades. It's, I think it's slowly falling out of fashion because it's, it's not matching experiment. To... So one of the big challenges, of course, like you said, is experiment is very tough. Yes. Because of the how effective yeah. both theories are. But the other is like just, you know, you're talking about you're not just deviating from space time. You're going into like some crazy number of dimensions. Yeah, you're doing yeah. all kinds of weird stuff that to us we've gone so far from this flat earth that we started yes. at, like you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and yeah now yeah. we're just it's it's very hard to use our limited ape descendants of a uh, uh, cognition to intuit what that reality really is like. This is why analogies are so important. You know, I mean, so yeah, I mean, the round earth is not intuitive because we're, we're stuck on it. Um, but you know, but you, 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 you know, but round objects in general, we have pretty good intuition mm -hmm. over. Uh, and we have intuition about light works and so forth. And like, it's, it's actually a good exercise to actually work out how eclipses and phases of, of the sun and the moon and so forth can be really easily explained by 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 round earth and round moon, you know, um, and models, um, and and you can just take you know a basketball and a golf ball and and a, and, a, and a light source and actually do these things yourself. Um, so the intuition is there, um, but yeah, you have to transfer it. That is a big leap intellectually for us to go from flat to round earth, mm -hmm. because you know our life is mostly lived in flat land. Yeah, to load that information, and we're all like take it for granted. We take so many things for granted because. Science has established a lot of evidence mm -hmm. for this kind of thing, but you know we're on a r r round rock, yeah, <laughs> flying through space, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a big leap, and you have to take a chain of those leaps. The more and more and more we progress, right? Yeah. So modern science is maybe again a victim of its own success. Is that you know, in order to be more accurate, it has to to move further and further away from your initial intuition, and so. Um, for someone who hasn't gone through the whole process of science ed education, it looks more and more suspicious yeah. because of that. So you know, we, we we need we need more grounding. I mean, I, I think um, I mean you know there are there are scientists who do excellent outreach, um, but there's there's, there's 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 lots of science things that you can do at home. I, there's lots of YouTube videos. I did a YouTube video recently of Grant Sanderson. That we talked about this earlier that. Uh, you know, how the ancient Greeks were able to measure things like the distance of the moon, distance of the earth, and, you know, using techniques that you, you could also replicate yourself. Um, it doesn't all have to be like fancy space telescopes and, and very intimidating mathematics. Yeah, that's, uh, I highly recommend that. I believe you give a lecture and you also did an incredible video with Grant. It's a beautiful experience to try to put yourself in the mind of a person from that time, mm -hmm. shrouded in mystery. Right. You know, you're like, on this planet, you don't know the shape of it, the size of it. You see some stars, you see some, you see some things, and you try to like localize yourself in this world, yeah, yeah, and try to make some kind of general statements about distance to places. Change of perspective is really important. You say travel broadens the mind. Right? This is intellectual travel. You know, put yourself in the mind of the, of the ancient Greeks or or some other person, some other time period. Make hypotheses, spherical cows, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, speculate. Um, and you know, this is this is what mathematicians do, and some other you know, sort of artists do actually. It's just incredible that, given the extreme constraints, you could still say very powerful things. That's why it's inspiring. Looking back in history, how much can be figured out right. when you don't have much right. to figure well, out stuff. If with. you propose axioms, then the mathematics lets you, you know, follow those axioms to to their conclusions, and sometimes you can get quite a quite a long way from you know initial hypotheses.